Okay, everyone, and hello. Welcome to this week's Arma Astro Bites, where we take astronomy and break it down into bite-sized chunks. We're joined again by Professor Michael Burton, who is the director of the Arma Observatory and Planetarium. So this week, we're going to learn all about the large-scale structures in the universe. So firstly, we learned about galaxies last week. So can you just recap what are galaxies? Yes, so this uh, picture on the top right here shows the Andromeda Galaxy. That's our local big galaxy. It's the Milky Way's uh, sister. It's a, it's a star city of something like um, uh, a million, million uh, stars in it. Uh, and it's a part of what we call the local group. The Andromeda Galaxy is the largest galaxy, the Milky Way the second largest in our local group of about 50 galaxies. It's about two and a half million light years away from us. So this is our local uh, neck of the woods, so to speak, uh, in, in the universe. Okay, and we also learned last week that galaxies actually come in clusters. So our local group is falling towards the Virgo cluster of galaxies. Is that the heart of our universe then? In fact, it isn't. Uh, just because we're falling towards Virgo, it turns out to be other giant clusters of galaxies, what are called superclusters, uh, all over the universe. In fact, here's a picture of another one. It's called the Coma Cluster. It's about 300 million light years away from us. It's got about a thousand galaxies into it. We're not falling towards it, but it's part of another cluster. It's called the Como Supercluster. And the Como Cluster is just one of the largest clusters uh, inside that supercluster. Wow, and how do we actually find these clusters of galaxies? How are astronomers mapping this large scale structure of the universe? That's a good question. It's a very challenging question because how and how, what, what, what kind of telescopes can we use to map out and find out how far away uh, all these galaxies are? Well, I, this picture I'm showing you here comes from a survey. It's called the 2DF Galaxy Redshift Survey, the two degree field. Uh, and essentially we're at the center there and it's mapping out in two different directions locations of galaxies in the sky. We sometimes see great walls of galaxies over here like that. Sometimes we see voids with relatively few galaxies in them. How have astronomers managed to make those pictures? It comes from instruments like this. I'm showing you a picture in the top left uh, of a large, what's called a spectrometer, at the top end of a telescope, a big telescope behind it, the Anglo-Australian Telescope in Australia, in fact, but there are several telescopes around the world that can do that. And in this instrument over here, there's, this is the, the, what's called the uh, focal, the, the field of view, the uh, focal plane, and there's lots of fibers, and each one of these fibers can be moved anywhere on this plane and can be put to where an image of a galaxy would fall, and you can measure the, um, the spectrum of the galaxy, and then using the Doppler shift, you can work out how far away that galaxy actually is. And so you can make up maps, three-dimensional maps, like this one I'm showing you now, which is just one of those slices, and essentially we're seeing the three dimensional uh, location on the sky where these galaxies are. You can see the, the giant holes, the voids as we call them, uh, and the walls, great concentrations of galaxies. Everything on this picture here is marking locations of galaxies, not stars. Wow, so with these surveys and this mapping that we're able to do, do we actually know what our local supercluster looks like? Well, yes, we do. At least we do on an overview kind of scale. In fact, here is a map of it. It's called Lanakai. Uh, it's an Hawaiian word. It's a Hawaiian word for potentially giant skies. Um, and it comes from some astronomers, in fact, based in Hawaii, who have made this map over here. It's our local super cluster. Uh, it's a region about 500 uh, million light years across. There's something like 100,000 galaxies inside there. Our local group of galaxies is just over here. The Virgo cluster towards which we're falling uh, is over here. And everything else labeled on here is another galaxy cluster. And essentially it's a bit like a watershed of a mountain. Everything in this region here is falling inwards towards the, uh, the central region, just like water falls off a mountain and falls down towards rivers. It's a kind of a watershed in galaxies. So it's our local supercluster. It's called Lanakai. Okay, so how do we know what actually is beyond the Lanakai? Well, astronomers have actually gone beyond that. So we might think Lanakai is a giant structure, but it's just one 
supercluster of galaxies and we are starting to map out and find where other superclusters are this is a very challenging uh, task but here is a map of the of the galaxy superclusters in our nearby universe our uh, lanakai one the yellow one here is our own our own local supercluster if that's the right word to use but uh, all the other uh, labels over here are other superclusters basically collections of maybe a hundred uh, thousand uh, galaxies uh, in them, each one with 100,000 million stars, and also these giant voids. There's, there's large regions of space which appear to have very few galaxies in them. We call them voids. The names themselves come out simply after the names of the constellations uh, in which the direction that they're actually found in. Okay, so are these then the biggest structures in our universe? Is there anything that lies beyond what we can see here? Well, the, the short answer to that is probably not, but we don't really know. In fact, this is, this is where the challenging the limits of, of our ability to survey the universe. What I'm showing you here, in fact, is an attempt to understand the very deep structure of the universe, but it's now in a pencil beam. This is pointing the Hubble Space Telescope in a tiny, tiny direction of the sky. It's called the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. Uh, and Hubble stared for many, many days at a time at a region about one millimeter across held an arm's length. That is about, I'm holding up a coin here, and I'm looking at the queen's head in it. If you look at the eye on the queen's head, when you're holding a coin at arm's length, that's about the angular size in the sky where the Hubble telescope stared for many, many days. And in this particular region here, we are seeing something like 10,000 galaxies in that tiny, tiny cut of space. There's one star, I believe it's this one here in the image, everything else inside here is a galaxy. We're looking back towards the birth of the universe. We're looking back towards about 13 billion years and we're seeing galaxies throughout cosmic time. So what are we actually seeing in this image and what can we learn from it? So we're seeing no less than the building blocks of galaxies over the age of the universe, what I mean by cosmic time. If we zoom in to this part of the image and this fantastic fidelity in the resolution, you can see all these pictures here all these objects are galaxies. Some of them are nice, obvious spiral galaxies like this one here, ones which we talked about earlier. Here we see some which more look like an elliptical galaxy, but many of the galaxies are very irregular shaped. They're not fitting into the, the, the nice patterns of ellipticals and spirals. What we're actually seeing is the building blocks of galaxies. In fact, the very faintest, the very reddest of the galaxies here are going back to times like 10 billion years ago. These are the materials which assembled together over cosmic time, over the last billions of years, under the action of gravity themselves, coming together under gravity to build up galaxies themselves. So a picture like this is actually looking at essentially the history of our universe in one slide, and we're seeing how galaxies begat larger galaxies and formed the universe around us today. Wow, it's amazing that Hubble was able to take such a teeny tiny image from that point of the sky and we can see upwards of 10,000 galaxies in one tiny patch of the sky. It truly is. It's one of the most amazing things that Hubble did and opened up a new vista and understanding of the cosmos around us. Speaking of the cosmos, next week we're going to learn all about cosmology. So Everyone's, I'm sure, looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so thank you, Michael, for talking this week about the structure of our universe and explaining a little bit more about what our local group is actually surrounded by. So thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Courtney. See you next week. See you next week. And thanks, everyone, for watching.